the uh, video cut short because I ran out of memory on the flip cam on my camera. So I don't know what is in between the last video, what we missed, and this video. What I just drew was the Earth. Equator. I tried to draw it the way it should be. Tilted. Equator. <coughs> and show you the three locations of the Gross rent, Global Rentoscope dot com networks network of telescopes that are available to be used by the public at a hourly rate. Nerpio, Spain in the EU. I'm just gonna try to I'm gonna try to do this. And there's there's where it rests in the northern hemisphere. Mayhill, New Mexico. And where it rests, Mayhill, New Mexico. And Victoria, Australia. Time zones. 4 a.m. in Texas at my office because here I am. I'm in the great state of Texas. I've got to use telescopes in Mayhill. I've got to use telescopes in Nerpio. And I have to use telescopes in Victoria, Australia. 4 a.m. Let me go ahead and do this. Because normally what I do, it's actually we're at 4 a.m., but I wake up at 3 a.m. But we'll just do the 4 a.m. <coughs> 4 a.m. in Texas is six PM then the same day in Australia in Victoria. Four AM in Texas. 6 p.m. in Victoria. The sun sets, sunset in Texas right now. Let's say it's 8.40 p.m. The sunset and Victoria five forty PM give or take. You see where I'm getting at? Four AM in Texas is six PM in Victoria, Australia, down here where I need to use that telescope. Our sunset up here. Northern Hemisphere, America, U.S. of A, Texas, is 8.40 p.m. Sunset in Victoria, Australia, is about 5.40 p.m. Because they're in winter, the days are shorter, and the nights are longer, and we're longer days and shorter nights. I have to be up at 4 a.m., to operate a telescope at sunset in Victoria. The sun sets at about 5.40 p.m. in Victoria now, while our sun sets at 8.40 p.m. And now for each, for each telescope station, you know, if I'm, if I'm over here in Mayhill, New Mexico, that's an hour, I'm an hour ahead. So... 4 a.m. in Texas is 3 a.m. in New Mexico. 6 p.m. in Australia. And this is like eight hours, I think. 
So 4 a.m. in Texas is eight hours. At four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's like noon. About noon. At 4 a.m. in Texas. 4 a.m. in Texas is noon. In, in the EU, about. 4 a.m. in Texas is 3 a.m. in New Mexico. And 4 a.m. in Texas is 6 p.m. the same day in Victoria, Australia. If I want to wake up and see something in Victoria, Australia, I need to wake up at 4 a.m. to see it at sunset and to be there on time. Telescopes. Gross has, I believe, fourteen. These fourteen telescopes are, are scientific grade telescopes that are set up permanently, ready to run with high quality cameras and the experienced technicians who have set it up so that you can point and click and run it. The way it's designed is for people to log in, give the telescope's coordinates, telescope go to give the telescope coordinates, tell the telescope what images the user wants to take and send the telescope on its way. It's ready to go. That's what you pay for. When you come home to telescopes at home, and in, this, in the essence of setting up the telescopes to take images, it takes a lot more knowledge experience and technical know-how to make a telescope take an image like the Gross network takes images. Telescopes at home uh, that you might bring out to the backyard, you might think you would put the telescope out there and point it at a star and enjoy the sights. Um, and it's true. But when you want to take an image that you want to use as a way to explain or describe let's see how does this go. Des the describe or explain what you're seeing out in space. To take a picture and to have the records that GRASS gives you automatically is a lot different. First off, when you have a telescope that has, that's mobile like ours, you have to spend two hours to set it up. The telescope, which here's the telescope here, there's a telescope, then gets a camera inserted into it, a CCD camera. Okay, and then there's wires and you know the telescope has weights to keep it balanced and you have to align on two stars so that the telescope can track you have to do this first and then you do two stars and then you do three calibration stars second and then you polar align the mount polar align third and then you got a, a telescope on top that's got to point to another star and guide a guider scope takes a lot of time to do that that's why we're building an observatory we're going to build we are building an observatory that's cosmic obsession
We believe that it will be completed by 11, 11, 11. And it'll see all the stars. And I don't have to do all the alignments anymore. Just like the Gross networks. None of this setup, first, second, third, polar align, guide or scope, two hours later, your object's gone. Especially when you're dealing with an object at sunset. An object at sunset will set while you're trying to do all this so that you can take a picture. When we get the observatory ready, we can just sit down at the computer and start imaging like I do right here. But then again, I'll, I'll be limited to one telescope, the Celestron 11-inch Edge HD with a Malin Cam camera. We need to be thankful that the Global Renoscope is available to us because this is extremely hard. It takes a long time to perfect. Night Skies Network. We do live broadcasting. From the telescope. We have shown, we showed Comet Garad. We showed numerous messier objects, galaxies, and etc. We have not broadcast Elenin because Elenin has set before we got it set up. All that work. Alignment stars, calibration stars, polar alignment. It's always it's always basically set. And then we were already set up, so then we would show we show common drive, we show the messier objects because those are the things that are in the sky. When uh, Comet Elenin comes up in the morning, we're gonna we'll be broadcasting Comet Elenin from our own telescopes. Uh, we have seen Comet Elenin in our own telescope, in this telescope. And this is about the time when we were showing Comet Girard, so I think this will go back to the end of July. And at that time, I told my dad to skip a couple of the alignments, the calibration, the calibration stars, and the guider. I wanted to go put the numbers in and go right to it. Because I, you know, the telescope will run with less work on it, all the calibration and everything, I could get to common element. And again, the Cosmic Obsession telescopes, I don't, I don't drive the telescopes. My dad drives the telescopes. So, I, I'm, 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 I don't. we have to work together to get things done, and I don't always get what I want out of it. When we have the uh, observatory up, no problems. So when Elenin rises in the uh, eastern sky before the sun, after it's gone through perihelion, the uh, September 26th alignment with the sun and earth, and, and moves past the sun, it'll rise in the morning before the sun, and we can see it again. Nightskiesnetwork.com, free registration. You need to go there, get logged on. The name of our uh, observatory is Cosmic Obsession. When the link is red, that means we're live. When the link is white, it means we're offline. Hope you all have a good day. Labor Day. Bye.